So, everyone can hear me? <clears throat> uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. So, when a user taps on this menu bar item, where does the message go? What part of the code is executed? How do you know? How can you find out? For the answer to all our questions, we need the responder chain. There's a list of objects a message is sent to. Each object passes events on to the next object until one of them handles the event. Each of these objects is a subclass of NS responder or UI responder, and we call them responders. Uh, the system handles building this chain for us 99% of the time. Uh, we just have to take advantage of it. It starts with the first responder, the UI element on screen, which has the user's focus, like a text field or a search bar. It travels up the view, control, view and controller hierarchy from there, and typically ends with the app delegate. This is how mouse and keyboard events on the Mac and touch events on iOS are handled. You can put whatever you want into the chain too. Inserting your own extra objects into the chain can allow you to manipulate events, redirect them, or handle them. slowly so the uh, translators can keep up. To do this, you will capture your view's current next responder, assign your own custom object as the new next responder, and then assign the old responder as your custom object's new next responder. Now your cu custom object is a part of the fun without breaking the chain. You've probably made use of the responder chain if you've worked on a Mac or iOS app, whether you realize it or not. It is involved in a ton of common interactions in Cocoa apps. If we understand what's happening, we can make implementing and debugging features much easier. Uh, this is just a small sampling of the things that the responder chain is involved in. Let's say we have a note-taking app that looks something like this. When the user selects paste from the menu, should we add that text to the current selected note? Should we paste it as a new note, to the, add it as a new note to the list on the left? If the text field is first responder, because the user was typing something, the text field implements paste for free and adds that text to the field for us. If this row in the table is first responder, we as developers have to decide what that means. The message travels first through the table view cell, then through the table and container view, then to the view controller, and then to the window controller. The message travels down the chain until it finds some object that implements paste. For example, if our window controller managed the list of notes, the window controller could implement paste by making a new note with the pasted text. In the end, if nothing handles the message, on the Mac, our app delegate has a method called no responder for event selector. By default, this method makes your computer play that beep sound if the event is a key press. You can change this to do anything you want for unhandled messages. On iOS, nothing happens. Something to look out for when you're wondering why nothing is happening when you tap on something or you use an external keyboard. You could drop this method into your projects for easier debugging. A similar method can be used in iOS as well. 
This way you can quickly see what is currently in the chain and maybe answer the question, why isn't my method executing? Sometimes your objects aren't in the chain when you expect them to be, so it's always good to look. You can also send messages through NS application or UI application to nil. This will have your application walk the responder chain looking for a responder who can handle the message. This is great for decoupling your classes since the object using this doesn't need to care about types or whether the other object exists. It only needs to trust that the object which handles that event exists somewhere in the app. You can also take advantage of this when you use parent view controllers. On the Mac, it is common to have view controllers embedded inside window controllers. On iOS, you can embed view controllers inside other view controllers. This puts them into the same responder chain. Rather than needing a direct delegate reference or something to get messages up to the parent controller, you can send nil targeted messages along the responder chain. This is less likely to break and can help avoid retain cycles. It can also eliminate code in methods like prepare for segue in your controllers. Let's look at another example. Let's say in your iOS app, we have some modal view we show to give the user some information. Normally, this controller might have a delegate property to inform the presenting controller when it is time to dismiss. This requires setup and prepare for segue in the controller presenting. Instead, you could use the responder chain to relay the message to the presenting controller. This requires no setup and prepare for segue. Hiding content behind a login is a common pattern in iOS apps. To implement this, I like to make a parent view controller responsible for deciding to show the login form or the app's actual content. This parent controller is in the responder chain, so you can send the logout message through the responder chain instead of your various controllers needing a reference to the parent controller. For more information about the responder chain, you should first check out the documentation from Apple, which is quite extensive on the subject. A lot of this info is from 2011 or earlier, but don't let this scare you away. Most of the functionality is the same as it was back in OS 10.4 or earlier. Uh, you can also check out my own website where I write about development stuff. Thank you for listening.